God, we want to welcome you at this time, wherever you are, in this beautiful land of Guyana, the Caribbean, and around the world. We want to thank you for your viewership week after week. We're coming to you live from Benton Hardina Street. And we want to thank God for this neighborhood that they have allowed us to be here. So wherever you are, we welcome you this time and we ask that you stay tuned. God bless you. This is when we want to continue uh, our discussion on the sub subject we started last week in Jeremy Temptation. Um, last week we made it very clear from the onset that temptation is not sin. Yielding to temptation is sin. We also established that when you yield to temptation and you commit sin, when that sin becomes fully blown, it leads to death. And so we, we made mention of the importance of families um, observing children at a very early stage to ensure that they do not degenerate to the stage, um, the stage where, 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 where they will die. In other words, um, you don't have to, as a person, you don't have to see someone with their jewelry and snatch it off their neck and, and run down the road. You don't have to invade somebody's house and take what, what, what is not rightfully yours. You, you might even see a woman walking the road with a, with, with, with a short dress and the, you don't have to rape her. You see, God has given all of us a choice. Notwithstanding that we, have, we might be tempted, we still have a choice to make. So you cannot say that it is, you know, this situation caused me to do that because all of us, we have the capacity in built in us to say no, to withstand that temptation, especially when we are rooted in the word of God. Gentlemen. Well, um, Reverend Hudson, commit me because um, I want to bring this thing home. As a young man growing up in, in a single parent home, my mom bringing us up and, and there were many days there were things as a young man that I desired that was not there in the home. And, and the, 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 the company around you, you know, they would say, man, let us do this, let us go here, let us go and do these things. I could remember the first job I got, $40 a week. And the guys I, was, I used to hang out with said, how oh, you could work for that? And I said, listen, I am working, I am learning, and I'm earning. And so I, I, I stayed with that job over time, I mean, there were a lot of things that were missing as a young man. You needed these things, but I stayed the course. I didn't know Jesus then as my Lord and personal Savior. I mean, I went to Sunday school as a young man, and I, I believe those values that were instilled in me kept me being, being contentment was one of the things that was taught consistently in the but home. But here you said you were paid. I grew up in East Rhineville, and the first job I had, I wasn't paid. I just decided to go and work. And over time, the, the, the people said, look, this young man seems to be someone who really knows what he wants. And they employed me, but I worked a year and not being paid. And what job are you doing now? Well, today I'm the chief education officer. Oh, that's amazing. Well, I, I thought I was, um, I had a... I was at the low end of the continuum when I heard $40 a week. Because when I started working, it was $23 a week. But when you started, it was zero. <laughs> so it's amazing. It's amazing. But what, what we are considering, really, we want to put the spotlight in the home, in the family. East Randall, you could imagine that. A boy from East Randall is now sitting, making decisions, affecting... Bel Air, Prashant Nagar, uh, who else? Continental Brian Park, Sobrianville, Queenstown, Albertown, La Cabo, Sanford, Rose Hall, let them, wherever. This, it's amazing. But you see the culture of that home. We have to prepare our children to run the world in our home. Discipline them. Uh, establish standards. Um, and we must know there are two forces working there in the family. You have the uh, push factors inside and you have the pull factors outside. Now let's examine a father writing to son in Proverbs chapter 1. Let's look at how topical this is. He said, my son, uh, David is writing to Solomon to know wisdom in Proverbs 1 and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. Bear with me, please. 
to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Sound like revolutionary words, right? <laughs> to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning. A man of understanding will obtain wise wisdom. And then he, then he, you know, he speaks about him. He says, real knowledge begins with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Not a university education. Knowledge begins with the fear of the Lord. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Don't allow, don't call yourself a fool. You know, don't behave like one. If you don't like wisdom and instruction, you are. <laughs> according yeah. to this definition. Yeah. And then we have this council. And we are giving this council free to all, wherever you live, wherever you socialize. My son, hear the instruction of your father. There's enmity in our 21st century world between fathers and sons. And sons are not programmed, or rather, let me put it this way. Sons are programmed to rebel against the instruction of, 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 of their father. But hear this counsel, my son, listen to the instruction of your father. Do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be graceful ornament on your necks and chains about your neck. My son, my son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. What, what word is this? If they say, come with us, this is not this one of the daily newspapers. This is very powerful. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them like hell and like the grave and hold like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. Now, when David was giving Solomon this advice, the technology of cell phones, we didn't have it. We know, I know that they're young men. You are in your bed and women at midnight at one and you get a call from your cell phone and that call says we ready we can begin the work in half an hour and from the safety of your home you go straight to your death you're, you're tempted and you you don't consider the outcome of your action so we're trying to put the ball in the in, in the black hole here and to let you know that what you're doing it's no new innovation. Mm. This has always been. Yeah, yeah. And the outcome will always be yeah. death. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bishop, you know, you, we mentioned in last week's program the issue of where young men feel that they are invincible. Um, there's a pervading concept called boys, where, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. some young men feel that once some act of iniquity is done over them, they become invincible, mm -hmm. even yeah. the bullets. Oh, so, I mean, with that, with that belief and with that feeling, mm -hmm. people are tempted to go beyond the normal. What's, what's the concept? Boy. 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 They see it in the so, African yeah. mood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they feel that once, once they are, yeah, yeah. well, they submit themselves to that, they yeah. become sure extremely invisible, and nothing can happen to them. So, yielding to temptation becomes a norm to them. But, it, but you just have to look at the wow. look, look at the look at the media, just look at the life, and you recognize that that is folly. Because at the end of the day, scripture is clear. Like like David's advice to his son, you will surely go down to the grave. It is you could imagine you in the safety of your mother's house. And you get a call, can you let, me, let us go to work? Why not your father's house? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your father's house. <laughs> and you are advised to go to, con to, to consult your trouble. You may not return. Yeah. And that's what we are saying. You, the, the, the James encouraged you to, to resist, to endure, to stand up and say, hey, I am not going on the run. I am going to stay away from that man. All of us on this panel here at different things in our lives, we have had different issues from power to sex to money that attempted to draw us away. And you have to, and that will never done until you die. That will always be there. And you have to every moment of the day say, hey, I am not going there, man. You know the scripture? The scripture, <laughs> the scripture is very clear. It talks about a crumb of life. The same scripture read, a crumb of life is laid up for you if you endure temptation. Um, 
so th there is there is a reward a reward from God something that is tangible um, you know sometimes we, we we invest in things or we are tempted or drawn away to things that will actually um, burn destroy I think the scripture says anything that anything that could be shaken will be shaken but not the word not yeah. one jot of the word and men going after women going after material things but the scripture is very clear that we have a crown of life that this crown is, is incorruptible you know I, I don't know sometimes if those men who plan to go on on robberies they plan to rape they plan to commit crimes and so on if that is your lifestyle I, I submit to you unless some serious sickness fall upon you you will not live to a ripe old age you will not enjoy um, the life that, that you should really enjoy it, 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 I, I don't know it might be difficult for you to see three sports because how could you be going about this thing every day you're robbing you're raping and think in your head that something will something will not things will not happen to you so at some point in time as, as, as uh, David pointed out you will go to the grave. So Every hear the council. One day, the battle will drop off. Hear the council. When you hear words like, come let us. Come let us do. Come let us do what? Come let us go into the house of the Lord. That's a good place. That's a good council to follow. I was glad when they said that. I was glad. Yeah. You rejoice when you're invited to certain places. But if you choose to follow a call coming through at the hour of the night, 1.30 in the morning, you in the safety of your parents' house, lying on a bed that is provided for you. You don't work for it, you provide it. And there you are with a cell phone that you don't even work for. <laughs> you get a call on your cell phone. And that call, you respond to. You made a choice to respond to that call. David said. Knowing fully well. David said, <laughs> the temptation, you know, we're on the same page. Yeah. David said, you're in the temptation, the call, these are the words. Come. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. This is what you hear. Mm. You know, you just see the tennis roll and cheese and the man up the ante and say, we shall find all kinds of precious possessions. You're not going into the interior, but somewhere in the city, you will find precious possessions. You didn't stop there. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us, he says. Mm. This is on the call, you know. Yeah. Let us all have one purse. One purse. Your this is, this is, <laughs> yeah. this here is this is one purse. You don't bring anything? This is this is no this is communism. Walk with a dirty boy. One purse we can have here. My son, do not walk in the way this is a caveat now, the caution. Do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path. Not to repeat their that, feet run to evil mm. oh, and they make haste oh, to shed blood. Oh. This is old language, mm. but oh. it is describing current human behavior. Oh. What one will? We are pleading with you to safeguard your sons, your children, your daughters. Young men, we are pleading with you to value life. I, this concept that you spoke of, Dr. Lee, boy, it's a concept that you should, I'm sure, I heard one man in the audience say, I know, I know about that. Yeah. You heard him? Yeah. yeah, he says, I know about that. So you mean that people, you mean that people somehow feel that once they receive this kind of yeah. service, yeah. they then become invincible, yeah. invincible and invisible. Yeah. Wow. wow. It's an act of iniquity. Yeah. Yeah. But we need to speak about that. Speak and yeah. let people know. Bullets yeah. will still find them. Yeah, we'll yeah, still find them. Yeah. I think, I think um, that's, that's one of the biggest deceptions that, that our young people, um, if, if that is how they're thinking, they're, they're deceived. Because at some point in time, at some point in time, the boy or the boy or whoever, <laughs> boy, 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 you know that you know I, I could get through with this walk here because when I put this gun to the head, then the eye can subdue them. You know, Michael said, um, Michael 2 1 says, 
What to those who plan in Nikoti there? Man, who sit down in the bed like time out playing the center mama and I die from the store. I, I die in the at the family. Hear what is good? What to those who plan in Nikoti, the those who plot even on their beds at morning and at morning like they carry it all because they think you better go on your powerful side going and execute this thing. The scripture says, woe be unto you. Death will come upon you at some point in time. It shouldn't be lost on us that a father was spending time dealing with the software yeah. of his child. Mm -hmm. A father was building from inside out. And this is what we're saying. Parents, train up your child or your children in the way that they should go, that so that when they are old, they would not depart from it. He was not going to, to leave it to chance. And so that's why the word was strong. He understood the culture, he understood what was happening outside, and he decided, this man, this child, this child came from me, I have to protect this child. And we have to get back to that place where we protect our own, and we have to protect our own by building on the inside. You said earlier, you, you didn't have a lot of things, but you know what you had? You had structure. Somebody placed something inside of you. And because of what was inside of you, that that was able to help you to be the man that you are today. You know, you know, what, what, what they built inside of him and built inside of us is a philosophy based on the word. That's right. That's right. With contentment is what? Great, great, great game. game. And we need to build again this way. We need to build from, as Jim Collins said, from good to great. The only way we can build from good to great or from nothing to great is that we have to establish again deep within the psyche of our children godliness and contentment. You know, when I was growing up, there was something called a safe. That's where they used to keep the fried chicken, yeah, yeah. the fried fish. What are the little netting from? Yeah, the bacon roti. <laughs> the bacon roti, the custard. What else used to keep in there? The powder. Everything, 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 all, the everything, things, everything. Everything. all the things that you want. That led to temptation. <laughs> they were on display in this thing called a safe. By the way, you think young people understand that? No. <laughs> and on Sunday, it was especially difficult for us because you're home and you're passing up and down the safe. You know, it's only recently I discovered that the best way to go into this, it's only recently, we don't have any safe. I heard a young man said, you know, they used to pull the drawer out. And put it in his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. So, you see, while I endured the temptation, very many times he went in and he took the drawer out, approached what he wanted. But that was teaching us how to endure temptation. Another thing I'm uh, recently, Bishop, I, um, I, I, I heard this from you. You were making reference about Queen Elizabeth. And, um, and you, you, you made the observation that because her father knew her potential and where she was actually going, because her father was James, he deliberately invested, he invested in homeschooling her. And lots of times we see the potential, we, not just the potential, we, we see the need for the investment in the child. But because we are otherwise distracted, we do not make the investment. Every child needs that investment. No matter who you may be, every child needs. Now, I am amazed at this lady and her, her outstanding work. But somebody invested in her so that she can be there. And you speaking know, of investment. Of this place here that, that we're backing here used to be a big shop. It sold bread and tennis shoes. I live right across the Didi Dentry there. And quite a number of the young men who, when the owner turned his back to get changed and all that, stole bread and tennis shoes. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, quite a lot of them are not here with us in this world. You can make an article. <laughs> <laughs> um, the point is, is that you know the little things that you yeah, consider yeah, petty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. develop oh. and they grew into criminal activity. Oh, yeah, yeah. And quite Excellent. a lot of them are I see one of the reasons why people do these things. Um, I find a lot of persons, especially the young, they have this sense of entitlement. They feel that what if somebody's driving a car, I'm entitled to drive a car as well. If somebody has uh, fancy clothes, I'm entitled to that. 
No, I mean, the truth is, I've been pondering this matter. What are we really entitled to is life? Hmm. Are we entitled to the air we breathe? I mean, I don't think so, because by the grace of God, we are breathing. Yes. So we have no entitlement even to the air we breathe. So one, we, we speak about what the family should teach. Families need to teach the importance of hard work. And then we have to realize as well that even with hard work, you, I mean, I think it was Minister Wesley mentioned, sometimes even when you work hard, you do not get what you want right away. You just still have to be patient and endure the course. But we are not entitled to anything here on earth. You know, in, the, in, in every community, uh, in every community, we have what we call signs of hope. And uh, we have, I, I think a mistake that people make is that they don't have anything. And because they perceive that they don't have anything, they resort to, to stealing and, you know, to, to doing things that are contrary to, to the norms of society and more so to the word of God. But we have something, you know, the scripture says, what is that you have in your hand? Something you have, you, you have, you have, if you look around in the society, you might, you have a store. Nothing is wrong for you to go to a man and say, sir, do you have a job for me? I mean, we talk about signs of hope, right? We, we, got, we have a school. Nothing is wrong with you going to school and trying to ensure that you, you know, you learn as much as you can so that you could become somebody. So, um, as you mentioned earlier, Bishop, there they, 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 they are assets in the community. And I think what has to happen is, is they must be a common together. I think we have lost that community spirit where there's a common together. People are just operating by themselves and say, look, this is not my business. But as a community member, you see things. You could round up people. You could form groups and start to, you know, go into events, out into areas that could be very productive. Quite recently, I grew up in Enmore. And in the community of Enmore, half Linton, the I know of at least four alleged counties. Cow? Counties. Okay. They, I like it. They, they, it, 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 was, it was known that these brothers were involved in these matters. And so there were families who would invest in cows, and then they would disappear. And before long, you know who did it. But they didn't have the hard evidence to actually lock them up. But over time, I can also tell you what has happened. Each one of them, natural law, both them and their families, natural law kicked in and destroyed them. And you know, I remember this because recently I said to a young man who is attempting to revive the trade of being a county. And I said to him, if you continue in this direction, the history of this community is you will end up just like these, all these other brothers. <laughs> it's, 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 it's amazing. But I believe in, thanks for sharing about that community experience uh, from the village. In every, in every village and every ward in the city, believe it or not, residents know the, well, we don't have cow thieves in the city, but residents know those who are responsible for removing your phone, your bicycle, windscreen wiper, and not only residents, but the conscious, efficient police officers, they also know the men who carry away car lights, the people, they specialize, you know. They, they have a division of labor even in, in that industry. And they, some thief cell phones, they would not steal a fowl, but they would go with a cell phone. And, they, you know, in some parts of the world, before they have some major events that would involve the public, one of the things the authorities do is go down in the area and swoop and remove some people, take them into a hotel provided by the state for a day or two, and the event would last, and then they release them afterwards, provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and save the people from them during that period. You know, this uh, wise man spoke and he said, in, in St. Proverbs 1, Surely, he speaks of, in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, but they lie in wait for their own blood. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. and, and, and they lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. And listen to the advice. 
it takes away or the, a description of the outcome it takes away the life of its owners what will it profit a man and we might sound passionate from our usual selves but the life cannot be compared with any other any other asset upon the face of the earth the question was asked what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul and you know if we go back into the homes where parents are given children by god the responsibility to make sure that child is trained in a particular manner that is pleasing to god you should not be robbed or you should not rob that child of that responsibility ensure that you protect the asset that god would have given to you so sure. and when god calls for an account of what you would have done or said to that child you better be ready i would like to say that the greatest book to teach a child from or children from is the word of god Amen. everything is in here Amen. everything um, Pastor Jay, you made reference to in doing what you would have recommended, you're not just preserving the life of that child, but you're preserving the community also and the nation because that individual comes out to be someone who contributes meaningfully to the upkeep of society. So, we have spoken at length about the importance of enduring temptation, the importance of setting good standards in the family. It's time we get back that community spirit. It's time we, the fathers, we take their positions in their home. It is time that we teach our children from the word of God and we adhere to those principles. We don't want to wait until they're taken out by a bullet then to be crying. If there may be any tears, let there be tears of joy because that child has come out from, as we say, the ghetto and is now sitting in the highest office in the land, or the highest offices of the land. Remember, choices, your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you, Lord Monville. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salacia on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.